Hello everyone, this is Verdict Designs here and welcome to the very first video of Sony Vegas Pro Basic Lesson. This is going to be a series on my channel where I will teach you things that you need to know about Sony Vegas and for this video, for the very first one, lesson one is going to be mainly about the layout and understanding what it is that you are looking at because I remember the first time I opened Sony Vegas and I saw everything and it just looked really confusing, difficult to use, but I will explain to you in this video the main bits that you need to focus on and what they do. When you open up Sony Vegas Pro for the very first time, you will have three different things and that is, you will have this on this side, which is where you browse for files. You will have one in the middle, which I got rid of because I don't really find it useful at all. What that tab is, is that it looks at the audio and it zooms it in so you can actually see all the audio waves, but I don't really like it. I think it's quite useless to use, but if you're a person who works on audio a lot, then keep it. But to get rid of it, all you gotta do is click on this little likes and it will get rid of that panel, which leads me on to the next thing. And that is that Sony Vegas Pro is very customizable. And if you don't like this layout, the default one, you can always change it, move things around. To give you an example of how to move them, if you look at these three little dots here, all you gotta do is left click and drag it out and pretty much you now can move it wherever you want. And to put them back, all you gotta do is hold control again and then put it back until it snaps on and that will let you move things. Same as this one as well. The next thing is just like any other program, you will have file, edit, view, insert, tools, options, and help. These will be the tools that are really useful. You will use this a lot for rendering, saving, and everything else pretty much. You will go in here. The first one is mainly about saving and rendering. Edit will be things like editing the project, View will be the layout of it and other things you can actually see. So video preview is here if you want to get rid of it. Let's say you're rendering a video. To put it back, you go back to the same place and click on it again. Tools, this would just be other things that you can use. So additional tools, I don't really use the tab. Options, I don't use this one either, but this is to also customize the layout of Sony Vegas. You have open, which will open the folder, save as, save as here and save properties, undo. Again, I don't really use this one as much. The only thing I really use up here is the save one. Also, when it comes to Sony Vegas Pro, saving your projects is very important because Sony Vegas does crash a lot. So that is a button that you will need to remember where it is. Another thing that I don't really use, I don't really need to use it because the things that are here, I can already do other places, if that makes sense. I would say maybe this one, capture video, might be something I would use, but I've never used it before, so it's still something that isn't too important to focus on. Over here, we start with the project media tab. This is gonna be the library of where you import everything. So all the clips, all the images will be displayed here. You can navigate by going to the side here the next important thing is to remember these five tabs here because you will use these a lot, especially the video effects one. This is where all the effects are kept. You have all of these and you can also get extensions from other companies that have plugins for Sony Vegas. Moving on to Explorer. Like I said, this is similar to project one. This is mainly about navigation and finding the actual files itself. Sony Vegas will require you to keep the files all in the same place. If you don't, if you move them, it will give you an error saying that it can't find a certain file. Transitions is another useful one to know. This is the built-in ones, the ones you get with Sony Vegas. So if you have two clips and you want to have a short little animation between them, you would go into this tab here and to use them, all you gotta do is have your clip here, have another clip next to it, make sure that they are connected, and all you do is just drag it in and apply it. Finally, the very last one, media generators. This is for text and other animations that you will be working on, but the text one is here at the bottom, legacy text. These are ones that are plain, they don't have an animation behind them, 
But if you'd like an animation, you'll go to tiles and text. These ones are the ones that have an animation to them. These are the template ones that you get by default. But you can also make your own custom ones later on once you learn the program. Just like the video tab, you can also install other plugins. So if you find a Sony Vegas text animation that someone else has made and they've got the plugin file, you can install it to Sony Vegas. I'm going to go over to the right side and this is where you have your video. Your video projects will be here. This is a preview. So if you'd like to see a full screen preview, you click on this and it shows you what the video looks like. But obviously I don't have a clip right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in some clips and actually show you the rest because you will need some clips. So to import videos into Sony Vegas or images and also audio files, you have two ways of doing this. The first one is going over here to file and open, but I like to actually find where the folder is and just drag it in here and this will just load it up and as you can see this is where the project tab puts everything else there's one thing you need to do and i always do this for every single video that i make and that is to right click on the video go to properties and disable resample you never want to have resample on unless you want to make your video look smooth what resampling does is that it creates shadowing. It adds in extra frames to your video to make it look smoother. But by adding in the extra frames, it will look like the video is got a shadow sort of. This is where you will have all the settings for it. And once again, go to the bottom here, go to where it says smart resample and disable it. This is where you'll have the templates, all of them. You can make your own custom ones and the frame rate. You will eventually open this a lot when you're working with projects. Let's say you have another video, which is 1080p. You will need to go into here and find a template for it. But if you're like me and other users, which have already created custom templates, Sony Vegas will automatically detect it. The very next icon is the video effects one. I don't use this one a lot because you also have it here, the same icon and it does the same job. So. If you want to do it up here, you can do it there. Or if you want to do it where the video is, you can click it there and that will open up the effects. Another useful one is this one right here. And this is the preview mode that you see the projects. If you want to see the video at the lowest quality ever, you go to draft and quarter. This will make it really horrible looking. But if you're running a slow machine or you've applied quite a lot of effects, it helps out a lot because Sony Vegas does crash a lot if you are previewing at best and that is one problem with sony vegas which needs to be fixed the next tool is about the video so if you want to have grid or overlays you can i don't really like this i don't use it so if you do then just mess about with the options here and that is all up to you the last two are all about screenshots so if you want to take out a frame out of the video and make it into a screenshot so let's say you are recording yourself and you want to take out a frame to make it a screenshot which will be your thumbnail of the video you click on this one and this will pretty much save it this one is to record if you do want to record in sony vegas then you click on that one and what i think that does is that it copies what the main clip looks like same goes for this one loop playback what this does is that if you double click on your clip to create loop region which means that every clip inside here will be rendered out or previewed this is sort of like a project area like a uh, work area pretty much what it does is that it will play in a loop so it will keep previewing until you stop next to the loop tool is the rest of them and this is for previewing the video so we have play pause stop skip and also this is the next frame this is if you want to be really accurate at editing it will allow you to preview every single frame in your video if you look under the video preview you will see where it says project and preview this just shows you what your project is set to so minus 720p and what the preview is right now but if you change the preview let's say we put it to the lowest quality you can see that now it's updated and it is 160 times 90 which is a really small size. 
But if you go back on best, it will be the full quality of the video. You also have frames here. So if you're working with frames and you click on the video here, it will tell you exactly what frame it is that you're looking at. And like I said, these two here let you go forward. So if you preview, it shows you every single frame of the clip. Display as well, this is showing you what the display size is currently right now. Moving on to the right side of the screen is the audio. This is a master bus, I think it's called, or master something. You can drag this out here and customize it more so you can actually see it. But this is mainly about audio. What this does is that if you click on this and you move it up and down, it will either make your video quieter or louder, but it will apply it to every single layer. If you go to the gear icon here, this will bring you to the audio tab and you have all the other options in here. The rest of the tools are just for audio. I think this one lets you preview it on both sides of the headset, left and right. I'm not quite sure what this one does. This is the timeline and the timeline is you will always be using the timeline no matter what. It's the most useful feature in Sony Vegas. Here at the top you have the time. If you use a scroll wheel to go out or to go down it will zoom out and if you use a scroll wheel to go up it will zoom in so you can actually see every second over here you can see the actual time in itself and how long you've been editing for or how long the clip is so if i go to the end of this you can see that it is 35 seconds moving on to the next thing is layers just like any other program let's say photoshop or some other program like paint.net you will have layers. Layers are all about video or audio. They're only those two options. In Sony Vegas, you can actually have quite a lot of layers. What these do is that if you have another layer on the top, so to create a new layer, all you gotta do is go underneath this, this gray bit here, right click and go to insert video track. You can have two videos on top of each other and that will display both of them if you turn down the opacity of one of them. You will also create a lot of tracks if you have images, videos and text. But for me right now, I don't. So to delete it, all you do is you make sure you click on it and it's selected and press delete. Similar to the video layer, you have the audio one. This one is quite useful because you have the volume here. If you want to turn it down, you make it go to the left. If you want to turn it up, you go to the right. So minus will turn it down and plus will increase the volume. Over here where it says pan center, that means that your audio or your video will be centered in the middle. So you can hear it in both sides of the headset or the speaker. If you make this slide over to the left, it will be 19% over to the left. So you can hear it more on the left side of the ears. And if you go over to the right, you'll hear it more on the right. But most of the time, you should leave this one on center unless you're editing a video which requires you to. The next thing is that you will have options here. So this one, you have the settings. I'm not quite sure what this one does. You have mute over here and solo, which I think will play on its own. It'll preview the video on its own. I'm not quite sure what that one does, but I know what mute does. Level, you don't really need to use this one. Another useful one that you will use is this one right here. What this does is that it will blend two images together. So let's say you've got two videos. You can go, you can make the top one add and then the bottom one leave it on source alpha. I will right click on here, go to new video track get an image that I want so let's have the blue background and then as you can see now we can only see the blue background but if we wanted it to blend in with the video itself we would go over to here and then make this to add which will put it on top and it will pretty much make them blend together so you can actually see both of them at the same time. The only problem with this is that if you use other effects let's say like darken it just doesn't really look that good so you will have problems with this the very next useful thing to know and you will be using this a lot is you can right click on both the audio and the video tracks so if you right click on this 
you have all the options here to help you so you can copy it cut delete apply effects group them stream and of course you have the properties which i showed you that when we first started this lets you change some options with the video with the audio you can right click go to properties and in here you also have mute again you have all these other options which you can change but mainly you will probably focus on either lock or mute you will also maybe possibly want to know about the bottom ones these ones you already know about them because they're up here have this one same as mine so you want to have it take i will show you later on what that does the other ones are tools that you're not really going to use unless you're an advanced user but anyway i am running out of time for first tutorial for the very first lesson i will be explaining more things in the next videos i hope this was useful for beginners or new people to sony vegas because i certainly didn't like sony vegas when i first opened it up i just got overwhelmed with the amount of tools but if this video was helpful give it a thumbs up it shows other people that it was a great video and you did like it if you want to watch more tutorials in the future especially if you want to see the next few lessons click subscribe button also leave a comment on what you thought of the video if it was a good video let me know if it was bad then let me know what i can improve on and i would like to hear from all of you we can get a discussion going we've already got an amazing community on this channel and I'm really happy to be a part of it. Thank you for watching the video. I will see you in my next one. Bye.